Hi guys, I was just getting ready to make some pan dulce, the conchas that people ask me to do uh, a, uh, what's the word, tutorial on. And it's not my recipe and I got it from a lady here who has like half a million subscribers and she's awesome. So I'll leave her link there and I'm not going to go into specifics of the recipe, but I do like to use her measurements of grams and kilos rather than cups. It just seems like the bread came out better, maybe more exact, but you can use her cups. Um, she speaks in Spanish. Her recipe in the description box will be in English on her channel when I give you the link there for the specific recipe. So basically there's a kilo of flour and 300 grams of sugar. And uh, part of what I need to do... I have a big bowl here, is also, to get ready for it, is warm up some milk. So this is, a, I think, 500 milliliters of milk. And then I'm going to put in some yeast. I put it in the microwave for one and a half minutes just to warm it up, but then I also kind of, uh, kind of blend it a little bit just to kind of make sure that there's no hot spots and that the, the milk is not too hot because you'll kill your yeast. Then we're going to add in three tablespoons of heaping tablespoons and since this one I couldn't get really heaping I'm just gonna add a little extra and sorry and we're just gonna mix that through just a little bit it just doesn't have to be anything that you do way ahead of time sometimes you do want to let it sit and if she ever has a recipe like that she'll tell you like let it sit for five minutes or whatever but I'm just kind of blending this in here and you can make it so that it completely blends away but I hardly ever mix it that long just some Okay, and then, hopefully I didn't kill it this time. I don't think it's hot enough. I checked it oh, the last time I made the bread two times ago. I killed it because it was too hot. And the microwave, I currently have 100 grams of each. I use butter, she says margarine, or and then 100 grams also of um, just regular, what's this stuff called? Um, uh, vegetable. Um, shortening and usually I kind of mix this through a little bit but I can't find a, something to mix it with let's see maybe this I just mix it a little bit just so it's all kind of melty and you can use all fat or all vegetable shortening or all butter or all margarine but I use half and half like she does and I'm just gonna bring this back and kind of push that to the side and let's go ahead and add in our yeast And this makes a lot. So um, the last couple times I've made batches, I've done half a recipe. Just cut everything in half. There are three eggs. And I guess if you're going to cut that in half, you basically <laughs> need to do um, one. I just do one egg. And it's not as creamy. So maybe next time I'll do two eggs. But I usually just do one egg. And I need to break the three eggs. I totally forgot about them. They have them here. They're supposed to be room temperature. So I guess I am giving kind of the recipe, but not quite. If you want it written down, like I said, you should go to her channel there. Oopsie. So three eggs, I'm gonna bust them up just a little bit. I like to kind of give them a little this before I throw them in. So we're just putting everything in, guys. All the wet stuff. And this stuff. And this bowl is huge, and it's still not quite big enough for this recipe. That's why, I mean, it is. It's fine, but I have to be kind of careful. And now you're just going to mix it through by hand. I guess you could put it in a machine if you wanted. I don't know. Sometimes when I use machines and stuff like this, when you want it to be delicate and the gluten not to overwork, um, you end up getting past where you want to be. Oh, and you're just going to mix it all together just ever so slightly until it comes together. So right now we're not completely kneading it, we're just putting it together, okay? So it's gonna be a little bit of a shaggy dough. It might come together a little nicer for you, it just depends. Like I said, when I use um, cups, it just comes together a little a little um, more easier. It looks more like a dough at the very beginning, but when I use this, it still stays a little bit shaggy, it's a little wetter. So, just a tip. I just use this, um, scale. Okay, so I'm just going to continue mixing it just until it's all incorporated, guys. I'm not trying to actually make like a dough ball. <laughs> the very first time I did the recipe, I completely kneaded it. I'm like, oh, you're supposed to do that. It still turned out fine. But um, 
I think the point is not to overwork the dough. So at the beginning, you're not going to overwork it. But I'm, I'm telling you, it's night and day how watery this looks or wet than when I use the cups. So the cups, it just makes the dough immediately. <laughs> like it's, it feels drier. As I was kind of measuring things out right now, I was kind of like, okay, well, it says, you know, 100 grams of butter, which is, but her recipe says half a cup of butter, but 100 grams is actually a little bit less than half a cup of butter. Um, one and a half cups of sugar, well, 300 grams is a little bit less than one and a half cup of sugar. So there are differences, slight differences. For me, eight cups of flour, which is what she uses for the cups, um, when I had weighed it, it was more like seven cups. So, you know, I know with like, uh, what's that stuff called? Whenever I make like uh, icings um, with, so see, I'm just getting it together, but there's some at the bottom that's not. Um, whenever I make like royal icing and stuff, it asks for two pounds. And a lot of people say that's the eight cups of, uh, how you call it? Which is basically a kilo. Uh, the two pounds is a little bit less than a kilo. But anyway, people say it's eight cups of confectioner sugar, but it really isn't. <laughs> so, you know, if you weigh things out, it's not quite cups. Okay, I just want to make sure everything at the bottom. Okay, so that's it. You're just trying to mix it through. Okay, we're not trying to, like I said, make like a big dough ball. And see, it's kind of shaggy and it's still kind of wet. So now I'm just going to cover it with some um, plastic wrap and we're going to let it double in size. It could take half an hour, an hour, two hours. Sometimes what I've noticed is that this stage of it does take like an hour or two. But later on when you're letting it double in size after we punch it down and knead it, it only takes like 30 minutes, maybe an hour on a cold day. So this very first part, maybe because it's a lot of it, dough, I don't know. It just seems to take a long time. And you can get the dough off your hands pretty easy. It's not like super, super sticky and I like to try to add it all back so okay we're gonna like I said cover it up I'm gonna put it in a warm spot usually in my oven not on <laughs> just in my oven um and wait you know an hour two hours whatever it takes okay guys I don't know if you can see this hopefully uh, I don't know how to show you the side of the bowl but look how much higher that is it's almost touching the plastic wrap so it took about oh, an hour and a half or so I'm gonna keep this to the side though because we're gonna use that again and basically, I'm just going to put a little bit of flour, and not too, too much flour, but just a little bit on my surface here. And this is the fun part, because once you start pulling it away, it just like starts deflating. Because it's all air. So now this time we are going to knead it for like five minutes or so. Just until you get that air out. And if you had a scraper, it'd be really good to go ahead and just get everything off this bowl. So I will try and do my best just with my hands here. I do have a scraper, I just don't know where it is after the move. I still have a lot of stuff in the uh, garage that needs to be looked at. Okay, so you can get some flour on your hands and just start kneading it. Oh, it's so nice. So nice and it's just like deflating, deflating in my hands here. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep kneading it until it forms a nice little not little, it's gonna still be a big mass, but a nice smooth ball, and I'll be right back. Okay, I think I'm pretty much there. It's still gonna be sticky, okay? You're not putting so much flour that you're trying to make it like dry, okay? But I think that's pretty good. I don't know, I'm tired, so let's see. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put it back in my bowl and cover it up again and um, let it rise another, about, probably about 30 minutes to an hour and um, I'm just trying to get this off here because if this stays here what happens is it'll get all crusty and because it's on its own you know what I'm saying so it starts drying up and you have these crusty bits in your bread which you don't want so we're gonna cover this back up let it sit aside but while we're letting that rise again I'm gonna show you how to make the topping for the conchas okay as for the topping in this bowl I have equal parts flour just the same flour used in the you know bread um, powdered sugar or confectioner sugar and vegetable shortening um oh i did take my nail polish off because i noticed it was chipping last night and i didn't want to get nail polish chips and everything so i started off the video um with it on and i was like oh no i need to take this off so that's all it is so she um 
Uh, Ana La Morediana on Pasteles La Morediana uses three cups of each for the amount of dough that she just made or that we just made. But um, it ends up being a lot. And maybe I'm just not making it thick enough or putting enough on my bread, but it, you know, it's a lot. So this is one and a half cups of each. You can measure it out in grams, but just equal portions of each is fine. And then um, I've tried this in my uh, KitchenAid and it whips it up so fast, it makes it so light and airy, it's too much air. So that's why I'm like, okay, resorting to just doing it by hand. Even on this, the mix function, because I knew that happens sometimes, like when you make polvorones, you don't want to put them in a KitchenAid because it'll just like whip it up so much that you can barely even make your cookies. Um, it won't come together, you know, it's like really airy. So I put it on stir and it was still too much and not even that long. So I'm just doing it by hand. It's kind of fun anyway, maybe get your kids involved because it makes like a Play-Doh basically. And then you're going to color this however you want. So if you want chocolate topping, you're going to add some, you know, separate out whatever you want because if you don't want it all chocolate. Um, add in some cocoa powder. Just mix it in just like you're seeing right now. Um, after you're done doing all this, if you're using, if you want to color it, you're going to use your gel food colorings, perhaps powdered food coloring. I wouldn't recommend the water liquid one because this is fat, right? Um, so your gel food coloring and add it in and make it whatever color is that you're looking to make. I have some left over for another batch, so that's another reason why I'm making a little bit. I just put it in the fridge and reuse it, or use it up, you know. Um, I might add a little more flour if this ends up being too sticky. You just have to kind of eyeball it at this point, because there are some days where maybe there's some more moisture in the air, so you need a little more flour, whatever. Like right now, this is really, really sticky, and it's usually not this sticky, so I might add in a little bit more flour and go from there until it becomes a nice solid mass that you can then color and use, right? So it's just like a, like I said, a little thicker than Play-Doh, hopefully, is what you end up with. And so yeah, I'll just keep working with this until it becomes workable. Okay, so I've put it out on my surface and I put down some flour because you'll find patches in this that are like really greasy because it's just the oil, the vegetable shortening and some that are a little bit drier, but you see my hands are a huge mess, but this looks pretty nice. See how nice it looks? And that's what I'm talking about. So this is basically what you're looking for. It's pretty cool. And then, you know, like I said, if you want to add some, this is the worst part just because it makes your hands so messy. But if you want to add some uh, color, just partition it out and, you know, I want to color this much pink or this much blue or whatever. You want to make some pretty conchas. I think today I'll make some mermaid looking ones. So maybe I'll do some pink, some purple, some teal. I don't know. And like I said, I have some leftover in chocolate, so I'm probably not going to make any chocolate. But um, that's the easiest one. All you do is add some powder, cocoa powder, and just mix it in until it's as brown as you like. Not super dark, because it's going to be kind of bitter. So it's just going to make a nice, like, light brown color. But anyway, all right. So I am going to pick out my colors, color this up, and by that time we should be able and ready to make our um, conchas. and risen. Um, I am gonna go make some regular conchas but I'm also gonna make some mante conchas because it's the, basically the same recipe you're just gonna bake it at a lower temperature and basically what that is and I showed you guys in another video is basically a concha with the shape of a mantecada which is basically a cupcake. I don't know where my cupcake liners are right now but what's funny is I found these red ones and most of the time when you go to like a Mexican padria their, their mantecadas are in a red liner. So these are really small like ish. But what you want to do is you're, if you're going to bake in a muffin 
pan or a cupcake pan with like this Wilton one, which is your regular standard size cupcake. It's a little bit small, so you're gonna put a little bit less of the dough. If you're gonna use like a jumbo cake pan or a little bit bigger, you're gonna put a little more, like what you would normally make a concha size um, little bit of dough, which you can make them 100, 200, 300 grams, whatever you want uh, in weight or size. So this is supposed to make 25. Which is basically 24. I just get rid of that fifth one. I kind of let it go in with the rest of them. So right now we're going to make, obviously, I'm only going to make 12 month conchas because I wasn't really planning on making those. And they're okay. They're cute. They're super cute. But um, it's not like that's my favorite thing to do. So let me get a little bit of flour, like the smallest amount. And once I start pulling this out, oh, it's going to start deflating. It looks so nice. This is a really, really nice dough. Um, obviously it's easier to work when you have half a recipe or whatever, but this is a nice full recipe. I'm going to get this out of here. The whole one kilo. Um, again, I'm going to scrape whatever off here. The dough scraper would be great, which I do have. I just don't know where it is at the moment. So, okay. I'm going to try to do this kind of thing because my kids, you know, would like to play. I'm in the kitchen and they're in the living room, so... You don't really have to knead this down this time because you're going to, as you're working with the dough, you're going to end up squishing it down anyway. Did I pick something up? I had some little yeast areas, which is kind of a bummer. But anyway, okay, so let's say I'm just going to cut this in half so I can work with half of the dough right now. And I'll put the other half back in the bowl with the plastic wrap over it so it doesn't dry out, okay? So I'm taking that. back of the bowl with that right on top and so like I said so this should make 12 of whatever you're making so if it's conchas again I'm gonna do a little bit less for the month of conchas because I don't want the ball to be so big I'm gonna try to gauge how big I want this to be I'm gonna push this out of the way just so you guys have an idea um the pastel is la Mariana she I don't know what she does but she works them like this and I can't do that so I just kind of <laughs> Each one I work by hand, just getting the air out again, making a nice little shape. And basically you want it to fit in here, and when you put it into your pan, it's gonna when it goes to rise, it's gonna rise up real nice. So I think that's a good amount. Whatever this is, I should probably weigh it, but whatever that is, that's gonna be a good amount for this particular thing. So I'm gonna leave my little cup to the side, and I want them all to be about that size, so I'm gonna try to do some right now so I remember exactly what I got here. So again, I'm not sticking to the recipe as far as this makes 24 or this makes 25. I'm just doing what I need to do to make them work in that cupcake because they're going to rise. This one needs a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to try to copy that as well as I can. And I'm not the best at this. This is the worst part for me, to be honest. <laughs> the eyeballing it and being like, is this about the same? I don't know. So I'm kind of pushing up with my fingers. You're basically just trying to get the air out. You're kneading each little piece, basically. That one's still too small. A little bit more. And some people I've seen make a complete ball out of it and then put it in your cupcake, you know, liner. So whatever you need to do. So that's that. I'll just, I'm just quickly showing you some. So I'm not going to work on the whole thing right now. And we're going to get some of our colors. So look how pretty these look. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So what I'm gonna do for these little guys, I'm gonna take a little bit of pink. They don't require too much because obviously they're small. A little bit of the purple and a little bit of white. I left the white on purpose. I'm gonna put these guys out of the way. And if you need to put flour down, put flour down. If you wanna not pat this out by hand, don't pat it out by hand. Whatever you need to do for this to work, if your dough is sticking to your hands, give yourself some Crisco on the side and just rub your hand in a little bit of Crisco instead of more flour, just so it works, okay? So like even this is just a little bit big. Probably want a little bit less. Basically you want it to go on top of this. And if you like, you know, this opposite side, side better, Flap that down, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put a little bit of Crisco down, just so that this might still be a little bit too much. So basically what you're gonna do with this little guy, put it together, smack that down there. And again, my hands are getting a little. And I'm just kind of tucking it under. So what happens is it bakes up. That pretty topping stays at the bottom. And to be honest, last time in Mante Conchas, 
that little dough being at the bottom tasted so good. Like it just gets nice and crispy. Oh, let me get my bread stamps. And so for these little guys, we're gonna use our little bread stamp. You could have stamped it before you put it in the cupcake holder. I just did it now, but I'm gonna get this wavy one. This is from Bread Stamps. They do not sponsor me in any way. Ooh, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, but I did order their bread stamps and they sent this little um, insert along. So it was the double set of the swirl and the um, pretty classic, this little guy. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to put it into my cupcake holder. You can make these in mini size. You can do whatever you want. So this is just regular, not like the jumbo Texas ones. And look how cute that is. So I'm going to do them all the same way and I will be right back. One last thing I did want to do to these just to make them a little bit cuter and I mean they're adorable anyway is add some like sparkles or sprinkles. So I have these guys. I have these little silver ones. So I'll add them as I feel like to some of them. Uh, they're edible glitter. I did have some flakes but I couldn't find them. So anyway, I'm just going to pour some of this out here. And all you do is just sprinkle and they're already starting to rise. Just on the top because they're basically probably just going to fall off anyway. <laughs> I'm going to push those down on there. Just something cute, a little extra, okay? I'll be right back to make the conchas. So I have my daughter sitting here next to me, so she's just gonna help out. But these are basically the same. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a, with the concha. Again, it's supposed to make 25, this recipe. I don't need any more of this. <laughs> my husband's helping me out with the cupcake liners, but we're done with the cupcakes. So again, we're just making a nice little ball. And it's about that size, I don't know. If you can see, it's about the size of my hand. And what I would do is, Go ahead and make a whole bunch just like this. You know, what's left of the recipe. Like I said, it's not gonna be the same now because of what we did. So I'll be right back once I have a bunch of these little guys set up. And basically what I'm gonna do is take them and I would leave them here just so you can make sure they're all about the same size. You know, like maybe this one needs a little bit more. And then I'll put them on the uh, trays that we're gonna be baking on, which are parchment lined baking trays. Some people leave them in a little ball. I kind of want them to be a little flatter like this when we're done, so um, that doesn't matter right now. So just make them into nice domed little nuggets and we'll rip. So I went ahead and measured out eight of them. They're all on this pan. I have six, seven, eight. Hopefully you can see it. Three and then two in the middle. And so I'm just gonna put them to the side. They're already rising, guys. This stuff is like ready to go today. So again, same thing. You can use a tortilla maker. You can just pat it out with your hand. See them, I've seen some people roll it out with rollers. Uh, I'm just going to show you this one I had from the other day and I just mixed it together. My daughter wanted blue conchas. There's some white in here and there's some chocolate, right? So we haven't had a chocolate one yet. And um, like I said, I just put it in the fridge and it's good to go. I left that out of the fridge for the, since this morning since I knew I was going to make them. And it is not very pretty. Okay, guys, this is kind of gross, but that's <laughs> okay. So you're just going to take your amount. Take and if you, that. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. And yeah. you can pat it out or put too it much. in your... <laughs> in your um, tortilla maker or however. I kind of find patting it out for me is easier, but you know, whatever. So like I said, this is not pretty. I, I, I know. <laughs> so, uh, but I have plenty of it left, so I want to use it. So then you're going to bring it over to your concha. Just place it right on there and push it down. I'm going to give it a push because I want it to flatten out just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to do that with all of them. Again, with the little pretty unicorn ones, what we can do is just Again, get some of each color, however you want to do it. And I probably need a little more flour on my hands because this is going to start sticking. Get some flour down here, get some on my hands. Pat that out. And I would have a bench scraper, but again, I don't know where my bench scraper is at the moment. So I'm not using that, but we are going to pat this out and try to keep it round because you want it to look nice on the edges, obviously. You don't want it to just... And I'm gonna get this little scraper guy. And again, just flatten that out on your bread. Just bring it over, put it right on top, and flatten it out. And I try to kind of get the, rid of the uh, fingerprints a little bit. And then you're also going to go ahead and bread stamp it. So, again from that, this is a different brand, but I'm just gonna take this one, it's the concha stamper, and then just make your shape. This is from Bread Stamps and it's a cute little flower and I'm just gonna make my shape on there. And that's it, we'll let them rise, okay? Oh, I just wanted to show you guys, these were ready to bake. I hopefully you can kind of see that. 
how they're kind of broken up on top and all that, that's what you want to see. So uh, those are in the oven, 385. You're going to bake them for 15 to 20 minutes because they're like a cupcake. So they're going to take a little bit longer than these already. Sometimes it'll take eight minutes. Sometimes they'll take 16, 20. It just depends. And I'll show you how I check just to check the bottom and see if they're nice and brown. These are so funny. My husband's like, those are so ugly. I'm like, I know because the color, but I thought maybe they look earthy. I don't know. They'll be good because they're chocolate. It's just not pretty the way I mix those uh, colors together, but they're gonna be yummy. But look how cute these little guys are. And some of them have the sugar. So I'm just waiting, as you can see, these are the first batch I did. This is the first ones I showed you. And I don't know, I said, as you can see, maybe you can't, but they're opening up already. And that's because the dough underneath is rising. This was the last batch that I made. So they're not as opened up yet, but I'm gonna bake the mantecochas and then I'm gonna get these in the oven. These are gonna bake at 425 to 435, depending on your oven. You know, you just got to try it out. But, um, and then I'll bake these, like I said, 8 to 16 minutes, okay? And we'll be back when everything's baked up. Okay, so I already took the mantaconchas out, and they took about 19 minutes. They look perfect. I'll show you right after I show you this. But what I do want to show you is that um, I have this set at 435, because that's basically what the lady says to cook them at. I have bottom and upper thirds basically i'm gonna do two trays at a time she always recommends putting like an empty tray at the bottom so you don't burn the bottom of your conchas but i don't have that problem with this uh oven so i'm just gonna put it at the bottom and top i'm gonna do like seven minutes because they can cook at eight to 16 minutes but i'm gonna do seven minutes and then i'm gonna come and switch them out they've never cooked in eight minutes in my oven so i know that's not gonna happen so i'm gonna set my timer for seven minutes um and then i'm gonna switch the bottom to the top the top to the bottom and also kind of reverse them, you know what I'm saying? So that the, what was in the back of the tray is gonna be in the front. Um, and then do another however long it takes until they're baked, okay? So seven minutes right now. Oh, let me do that. And then um, I wanted to show you the mantaconchas came out so cute and so pretty and not like burned or anything. They're starting to brown a little more maybe than I would like, but I think that came out just fine. So they're so adorable. I'm just, they've been here for a few minutes. I'll pop them out. And then we'll check them out in just a bit, but let's get those other conchas baked up. Just waiting <laughs> they're literally just scoping it out and they're guys just waiting for this stuff those are cooling but hi all right well we're almost done i have a couple minutes i still have three minutes left which will make it 16 and i kind of just take a peek they are getting kind of dark on the top so i'm gonna check the bottom of this one because you don't want to get too far either oh i don't know how close i can get my camera sorry guys uh let me see here Nah, it's still a little bit light. Let's see how that just broke up. That's why I don't like checking things. It's still a little too light, so we'll leave it for another few minutes. I'm gonna check it one more time. I'm gonna check the bottom one. It's so funny because the lady, when I watch it, she always says not to burn the bottom, but to me, it's burning the top that's the problem with this um, oven. Yep, the bottom ones look really good. So I'm gonna take this out and maybe check this one one more time. A lot darker, but not quite dark enough. And there's a lot more bread on that pan. So I'm going to take this bottom one out. That was about 16 minutes. And then just let the others bake for another minute or two. Okay, guys, and that's it. And they came out beautiful. Okay, so you know how I said, oh, I'll, well, I don't really want to touch it because it's still warm. Well, it's warm. This stuff will stick to your finger, and then it ruins the, the look. So I don't want to mess it. But perfectly browned, beautiful mante conchas. These, obviously, we knew we put them, put them in. They were ugly, but they baked up nice. And guess what? I burned that last batch. <laughs> so I had looked at them. Look how the burns was. And I told you, I never burned from the bottom or whatever. So I switched them out. But this, because these were by themselves in the oven, okay? So there was no other one with it. I mean, even the sugar melted. If you can see that, that's pretty hot. It is hot. It's 435 degrees. Um, I looked at it, and I was like, well, it probably needs to, a couple more minutes. I went outside and shook a rug, and I came back in. 
And as soon as I saw them, you know, through the thing, I was like, oh no, those are burned. And they are burned, not just like, oh, whatever, look at this. Oh, but, oh well, we live and learn. Um, she definitely does mention whenever you cook one tray just by itself to have another tray just empty underneath, just so it doesn't get too hot um, with the heat coming up from underneath. So these, I mean, got toasted. But anyway, too bad. All right, well, next time we have plenty of bread over here. Maybe I'll still try to eat that over there. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I have some company coming over. I think they're going to be impressed. Do not show them the burned bread. And we will go from there. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that helped you all that were um, asking about making the conchas and things. So cute. Oh my gosh, oh my you gosh. guys. I'm just going to say a couple things because I just realized, like, I, when I talked to you guys about baking them, I kind of was like, this and that. Okay. When you bake the conchas, just these straight up conchas, right? The larger ones. It's at 435. Now, when she says in her video 200 degrees Celsius is really not even 400 degrees if you do the translation of 200 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. But she says 435 and she bakes bread and this is what she does all day. So, yes, that worked here. I did 435. I've done 425. You know, I don't see a lot of difference between those two degrees. So if you feel like you want to go on the lighter side, do that. And 8 to 15 minutes. So these I did 16 minutes. These I did 16 minutes, but they were by themselves, right? And you saw how they got a little darker than we like. I wanted to show you something though, so that's why I came back. These guys, you are gonna bake 20 to 25 minutes because they're in a cupcake. So like the heat has to get into that whole thickness of it, right? It's thinner. Well, obviously this is up, but when it bakes up, that's different than heat getting into the center of a cupcake, okay? So those are 385, 20 to 25 minutes. I did want to show you something though, because I hate wasting and you guys probably already know that from knowing me here on my channel. So I was like gonna throw these out and I'm like, let me just see what it looks like on the inside because I'm gonna throw it away anyway. I cracked it open. I'm like, oh my gosh, this bread is beautiful. Look at this. And so I ate it. <laughs> it's so good. Okay, so obviously it browned too much. I'm not gonna give this to somebody because it's ugly. And then the bottom, legit burned. But if you don't eat that, actually you can even eat this piece. I ate this, it was fine. It didn't taste so good when you get to this part. But I hate wasting, and look how soft and beautiful this bread is. Let me get this closer. Hopefully you can see. I mean, it is just so nice. So, I'm not going to throw those away. Those are VNA special. I guess I'll eat those. Like My husband's like, yeah, it's fine. He tasted it. He said it was a little bit burned because I let him bite the bottom part, which for me, I only bit the top. And then my son, um, my little one's like, oh, that's good, Mom. So, you know, you live and you learn. Obviously, I know not to do this again, but... Um, it's not burned burned like it doesn't even have a flavor of burn throughout the thing you know what i'm saying so it's fine but just want to come back because i don't like wasting i hate wasting that's why i reused the same topping from the other day because i had it and it's not pretty but it tastes good and these taste like chocolate so hey why not but look how gorgeous these babies are oh my gosh i'm so excited these are so pretty you know you just keep getting better with time like i said i made macaron the other day they did not turn out but i haven't made them in a couple years basically so I'm going to try again and remember what I remembered from years ago. So, All right, guys. Just wanted to show you thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.